This is News Channel 5. We begin tonight with breaking news. A triple three alarm fire ripped through an apartment complex at East 130th Street and Buckeye in Cleveland. Here's a live picture right now of the scene where fire crews are still cleaning up at this hour. The blaze started around 8 o'clock tonight and it forced at least one person out of the building. Here is video of the fire quickly spreading to the roof of the building. It took crews a couple of hours to get the blaze under control. No one inside was hurt. Fire officials on the scene did tell us two firefighters were injured in the fire. They were both taken to Metro Health Medical Center with injuries to their arms, hips and their backs. We were also told that part of the roof collapsing on those firefighters caused the injuries. Stay with News Channel 5 on air and online at newsnet5.com for further updates. Chief Meteorologist Mark Johnson is tracking a little and even some sunshine for the weekend, Mark. Danita, you might be shivering right now if you're going out and about without the proper attire. It is currently 47 degrees in Mansfield. It's this area overnight where we could see readings flirting with upper 30s to near 40 by dawn. Same for Worcester at 50, Akron's at 51, Ashtabula 52. It's going to be a very chilly overnight tonight. The good news is any rain showers out there have pretty much faded away. Still some lingering clouds. I think we're going to clear a lot of those out during the rest of tonight. 7 a.m. Partly cloudy 47. That's for Cleveland. Again, inland areas lower 40s for Akron, Canton, Worcester, Mansfield. Only warming slightly into the mid 50s by lunchtime. So a sweater tomorrow. I'll tell you the warmest day of the weekend, the best day to get outside and maybe Mow the lawn or take a walk or watch some fall leaves coming up. Throw them a bone. That's what Cleveland Kennel volunteers are pleading for tonight as they scramble this weekend to help try and find 10 or more dogs new homes. If not, the animals may be euthanized. News Channel 5 Stephanie Ramirez joins us now and she's going to tell us about the volunteers that are trying to stop this from happening. That's right, Danita. The volunteers I spoke with today told me about eight dogs were spared from being euthanized, which is good news. But they say that also means those eight are now back on the list and possibly more if they don't find new homes in less than a week. It's the same hamster wheel every week of trying to find homes um, for about 30 dogs on average through our urgent list. And like I said, there's almost 100 that come into the kennel. About 100 dogs a week, says Cleveland Kennel volunteer Julie Konopinski, who helps run their Facebook page. And tonight, their Facebook posts have the word urgent all over them. They're trying to find new homes for at least 10 dogs by next Tuesday, or else those dogs could be put down. That's the spinning hamster wheel Konopinski says they face every week, adding the lack of resources at the kennel doesn't help. News Channel 5 went inside the kennel a little over a week ago investigating outdated conditions and claims by volunteers that too many animals getting sick without needed access to a vet is hurting their chances of being adopted. I feel bad for them, honestly. Still, the volunteers are not giving up. Some of the dogs that we're trying to save now have been there three weeks, um, close to a month. So they've been sitting in a box all that time. And um, if we can't save them, it's like, what have they been sitting there all that time for? Sarah Rayner says they need people to adopt or foster or even for rescues with space available to get involved. I don't remember the exact words. Gotney said you could judge a society by um, the way its animals are treated. And I feel like Clevelanders always, you know, there's a lot of great people in Cleveland. I don't think a lot of people know about the kennel or um, the fact that there are so many dogs in need. Now, if you do want to get involved, calling the kennel will not help you. What you have to do is email the volunteer group. That email is clevelandacvolunteer at gmail.com. We have it up on newsnet5.com and on my Facebook page as well. Danita? Thank you, Stephanie. A settlement has been reached in the Chardon Healing Fund lawsuit. The settlement provides for some additional payment to each of the families to be made by the fund. Back in May, the three families whose sons were killed in the 2012 Chardon High School shooting filed the lawsuit asking the court to intervene in the fund's distribution by the United Way Services of Geauga County. The settlement is contingent upon all parties involved, keeping the specific details private. The Akron Police Department wants to hear from you. They need leads on finding whomever is responsible for Taylor Robinson's death. The reward for information leading to a suspect in her death was up to $7,000. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Akron Police Detective Bureau at 330-375-2490. You can remain anonymous. 
Tonight is the holiest day of the year for those of the Jewish faith. Yom Kippur began at sundown tonight. It ends at sundown tomorrow. The holiday is a 24-hour period of fasting and prayer for Jews all around the world. A traffic alert for you starting on Monday morning. If you travel into downtown Cleveland, you will need to find another way onto I-90. The East 9th Street on-ramp is closing for at least 60 days. And don't forget the Ontario Avenue ramp to 90 westbound is already closed. The closures are part of the Interbelt Bridge project, so make sure you watch Good Morning Cleveland Monday morning starting at 4.30 for traffic updates. Coming up, we're told the weapons exist, the plan to get them out of Syria, and what to do with the weapons. Dramatic video tonight of firefighters struggling to drive a massive fire truck through fast-moving floodwaters. Why the dangerous situation in Colorado may actually get worse. And does it really get better with age? We'll toast the surprising results next. You're watching.